Now, if there's one thing the Lord's gonna do, he is going to make us wait. And there's a reason for that. Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make big face content here on YouTube. I post new videos every other Monday. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely be sure and subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what it truly looks like to wait on God what the Bible defines as waiting on the Lord. And then we're gonna take it a step further and unpack four things that we can expect to experience when we are biblically waiting on the Lord. I think it's important that we have an understanding of what the Bible defines as waiting on God because in our own flesh, maybe in our own experiences, in our worldliness as we are in the world, but not of it, we might have misconstrued what waiting on God truly means. So go into the Bible, okay? We're gonna be unpacking the text, specifically looking at one Hebrew word and really allowing that to paint this imagery of what waiting on God looks like. We then are gonna jump over into Isaiah 40 chapter, oh no, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 and unpack four things that we are guaranteed to experience when we biblically wait on God as the Bible says waiting on God looks like. And the thing that I want to keep in mind here is that the text in Isaiah is specifically talking to people who are weary and exhausted. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to waiting on God, there definitely is a point where I experience weariness, where I experience exhaustion. And so that is specifically who this video is for. For my good sis or my good sir who was weary in the wait and how we navigate this waiting period because oftentimes this waiting period is a period okay it is a good chunk of time and then once we feel like maybe we received the promise in one facet of our life now we are waiting on something else from the lord in another area of our life and so we need to get comfortable waiting on god and we need to know how to wait well. And to know how to wait well, we have to know what does the Bible say that waiting should look like? Whew. All right, sis. So that's the game plan for today. As you can tell, we're in like a different setting. I thought I would kind of mix it up. It's giving like podcast style. So let me know what you think. But before we hop into it, I do want to go ahead and pause here and thank the sponsor of today's video, Hillsdale College. You guys already know I absolutely love Hillsdale College because they offer over 40 online free courses on topics that we actually want to know more about. I've gone through their course on the book of Genesis. I am currently, slowly but surely, making my way through their course on the book of Exodus. After this, I have my site set on the David story which breaks down David's life from shepherd boy all the way up through King and into his death as well. These courses are beautifully shot. They are not boring at all but you are getting that sound theological biblical information and as someone who is looking into taking like seminary courses or maybe getting a little certificate seeing these prices okay of what these colleges are costing I'm just so grateful that Hillsdale College offers all of these courses online for free. And this is not free just with my link. This is not free for a limited time. It says these courses are always free. So definitely tap into these free resources, get more knowledge and understanding of the Bible under your belt because that will equip you to live out what this word is saying what this word is telling us, what this word is showing us on how we should live our lives. Our life here on earth is but a vapor. And so why not live it? And according to what God says as much as we possibly can. And these courses help us again, understand the text, which helps us do just that. So if you guys wanna check out Hillsdale, I have a link up here as well as down in the description box. It is hillsdale.edu slash Melody. And you can register and start taking a class for free literally right now. That is hillsdale.edu slash Melody. All right, sis, all that being said, grab your Bibles, grab a notebook. Let's go ahead and get into this word and start unpacking first what it biblically means to wait on the Lord and then dive into the text Isaiah 40 to get an understanding of the four things we can expect to experience as we wait on God according to what the Bible defines as waiting on the Lord. Let's get into it. So let's start this off by first and foremost, biblically defining what waiting on God is and what it should look like. And so if you pull up the word wait or wait on the Lord in Hebrew, you're going to get this word, which according to my phonetic pronunciation of it, it is kal vol. I don't know why my brain is like really struggling with that, but 
call ball. And so as you look up some of the meanings of that specific word and like how they describe that word, one of them is intertwined or twisted like a rope. And so here we can have this imagery that waiting on the Lord or to wait on the Lord is to be twisted up, intertwined with the Lord. And so let's take it a step further and really get this imagery. So let's say that we are doing a three-legged race. That's when two people tie themselves together. Okay, let me not cover my face. Two people tie themselves together and they're both using one of their legs, but this other leg is now becoming one singular leg. So they are three legs moving together. And so when we tie ourselves up with the Lord, when the Lord stops, we stop. When the Lord starts running, again, we're tied up together, we start running. And so that biblically is the imagery that the authors of the Bible and the Lord has left us for what waiting on him looks like. We have intertwined ourselves with him. We can't help but stop when he stops. We can't help but run when he runs because again, we are tied up to him. And this is where we have to pause and ask ourselves, are we tied up with the Lord? Sometimes our waiting looks like us feeling like, okay, I might go over here and try this, or I'm feeling a little impatient. Let me go ahead and take matters into my own hands. But if we were truly, okay, like a cord, wrapped up, intertwined with him, we couldn't go off and do our own thing because simply where the Lord is is where we also would be. And so that's the first thing that we have to understand here and the first heart posture that we have to assume here when we are waiting on God. Tie yourself to the Lord. When the Lord stops, that's where you stop. When the Lord starts running, that's where you start running. When the Lord is taking it slow and easy, that's when you are taking it slow and easy. When the Lord is laying down and resting, that's when you are laying down and resting. And now as we transition over into the text in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, here Isaiah is prophetically speaking to the nation of Israel after they have been in exile in Babylon for 150 years. These people know weary, these people know exhausted. Granted, when we really paint the picture of what this text is all about, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah is Isaiah admonishing the nation of Israel because of their idolatry, because how far away they were from the Lord. And so he is rising up a remnant who is a part of the exiled people in Babylon. And Isaiah now is giving them hope. For the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, he basically was beating them over the head saying, this is what you did wrong. And this is why you were in this position that you're in. And now he is giving them hope. And in that hope, he tells them, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen. We can read this verse together. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. And so this is the promise that we also can prophetically receive from Isaiah when we biblically wait on the Lord. God doesn't waste words. He's not painting this imagery for no reason. So let's go ahead and unpack it line by line, the four things that we can expect to experience as we also wait on the Lord. And again, wait on the Lord by being intertwined with him in this process. So number one on our list, the first thing that we can expect to experience when we are biblically waiting on the Lord is for our strength to be renewed. And something we have to consider here is for someone, i.e. the Lord, to renew our strength. Our strength has to be deplenished, right? We don't need our strength renewed if we're at tip top strength level. Like if we are feeling really strong, we're feeling really good. God renews the strength of people who are weary. And so this implies that we are going to experience weariness in our weight. But as we wait, the Lord will give us a supernatural renewal of strength. And I think this goes back to that imagery of us being intertwined. When we are yoked with the Lord, our burden is going to be lighter than if we're trying to carry this thing by ourselves. And so that in and of itself renews our strength. And so that's the first thing that we are guaranteed biblically to expect to experience when we wait on the Lord. Our strength will be renewed. So number two on our list today, the second thing that we can expect to experience when we biblically wait on the Lord is that we will soar on wings like eagles. And so this is talking about the measure, right? How much of this supernatural strength renewal God will pour out on us. 
he is going to give us enough that we are not only just you know crawling through the day we're not just taking a step by step through the day we are soaring on wings like eagles when we look at eagles eagles are one of the strongest and fastest birds in all of you know what i mean the world i think this is a beautiful reminder that god is going to outpour on us and i think it's important for me to call out here that as we are going through each and every one of these things that isaiah is prophetically speaking to the nation of israel that we also can hold into our hearts as to what we will receive when we biblically wait on the lord we don't want to go into this with this transactional heart we don't want to say all right lord I've been waiting on you for 14 days. It says in Isaiah that I'm going to get this, 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 and this. No, sis, we want to have a heart posture of being focused on the Lord during this time. Not what he's going to give us, but truly just focused on his goodness, his presence, the fact that he is keeping us during this time. And as our attention is taken away from how long we've been waiting or even that thing that we're waiting for, and we're simply focused on his face, being in alignment and intertwined with him, that is when this outpouring, right? This measure that it talks about here, where we are soaring on wings like eagles, that's when this supernatural renewal of our strength occurs. And it's important for us to remember that we're not holding on to God's hand for what he can give us. We're holding on to God's hand because of who he is to us, our heavenly father, okay? And so that is going to be number two. So number three on our list today, the third thing that we can expect to experience as we biblically wait on the Lord is to run and not grow weary. This is basically talking about the purpose of the renewal of our strength that the Lord outpours onto us. Not only does he give us enough that we are soaring on wings like eagles, but he gives us this outpouring so that we can continue forward with him. Not so we can stay and make a bed in this season that he has us in, not so we can go off and do our own thing, not so we can go backwards, but he gives us this strength so we can move forward with him. And we're not just moving forward, we are running, sis. And I think this is a beautiful correlation to the verse that is out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where Paul tells the church in Corinth to run their race. This is the purpose behind God outpouring this supernatural strength renewal so we can continue to run our race. So number four on our list today, the fourth thing that we can expect to experience as we biblically wait on the Lord is we will be able to walk and not faint. And now let's go ahead and talk about the breakdown of the flow of these things today. So first we soared on wings like eagles. Then we were able to run and not grow weary. And now we are being promised that we will walk and not faint. And it might seem like these things are out of order, right? We're talking about soaring and then running and now we're walking, but God doesn't use words for nothing. And so this highlights the fact that first in our walk with God, we get to soar into heavenly places with Jesus Christ because of our belief and faith in him. And because of this soaring into heavenly places with Jesus Christ, we now are able to run our race, referencing that verse out of 1 Corinthians. And as we run our race, we then are able to walk out this life with him which references this verse and so i think it's important that we remember that each and everything that isaiah is promising these weary and exhausted people is purposeful god knows that we're weary in our weariness if we wait on him. This is not something that is just given to us because we are believers. We have to have a heart posture that is waiting on the Lord. We have to have not even just a heart posture, but actions that back up the fact that we are waiting on God. And as we are waiting on him, this is what he promises to give us. So it says, I don't know who else is navigating a season where they are holding on to the promises of God, but they are tired. They've been trying to hold on to these promises maybe for some months, maybe for some years, maybe you're like the Israelites and it's been some decades but since I want to encourage you in what the Lord has given us to be encouraged by his living breathing word go back to this word read the word read what God says and in the waiting don't miss what God is doing because you're focused on the things that God isn't doing this is something that i've mentioned in a previous video i'll link the sermon down below that my pastor really breaks this down beautifully 
But in this season of waiting, there can be a tendency for us to get discouraged. And a lot of our discouragement can come from the fact that we're waiting on God to do something specific or to move in a specific way or to give us something specific or for a promise to come to pass. And when we don't see that thing happening, we lose sight of the fact that God is still working in this season. We're so focused on the thing that he didn't do that we're missing what he did do. And so I pray that this scripture today out of Isaiah is able to encourage us in what we are likely experiencing right now, but that we might be missing. Sis, the fact that you made it through yesterday, God has renewed your strength. The fact that you are still walking in your sound mind, the fact that you still have your faculties, the fact that you still have what you need to get through today, God has renewed your strength. And it is because of how you are waiting. And then for those of us who we realize by this biblical definition of waiting that we are not actually truly waiting on the Lord, let us get into position and do just that to receive his outpouring of supernatural renewed strength. All right, so that is gonna be it for me. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you again to Hillsdale College for partnering with me on today's video. And now of course it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know what is something that you are waiting on God for? Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we all are waiting on the Lord for something. This is a universal experience of all believers. So let us know in the comments what you are waiting on the Lord, just one thing you are waiting on the Lord for and how we can be praying for you during this waiting season. I'm gonna be sure to drop my response, so definitely take a second, drop yours, and then scroll on through. And then also, the freebie for this video is a carefully curated playlist for those of us who are navigating a waiting season, or maybe feeling like, you know, this is giving a waiting life, okay? Just a life full of waiting. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that playlist down below for you. It is going to be filled with songs that have truly just been ministering to me during the waiting season, just from a variety of artists and um, some of my faves. So definitely grab that playlist to keep you encouraged throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. And as always, I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.